that's my brain blurry and freezy every time I wondered is it expensive to go to Zanzibar how much money do I need to go to Zanzibar have you ever asked yourself those questions because before I travel I did like how much money do I need for a trip to Zanzibar in this video I am going to share with you guys travel cost to Zanzibar and everything you need if you haven't been to Zanzibar you're trying to plan a trip to Zanzibar watch this video and watch it to the end this is my most informative video yet and I hope it helps you plan your first trip to Zanzibar or your next trip if it's not your first time here hey lover <laughs> welcome back thank you for continuous support but if it is your first time here hi my name is Ori feel free to call me Dre welcome to my youtube channel check out some of my videos let me know what you would like to see because I would like for you to stick around anyways I will if you see me checking looking down I'm looking at my phone and everything because I don't want to leave out any detail so first things first things first on our list oh that's a loud one on our list on the list is visa when you're traveling to any country but this one in particular we're talking about Zanzibar which is of you know Tanzania you need to check whether or not you need a visa now when you're uh, with the Zambian passport or I think I actually think all the South uh, the Sadic countries are visa free to Tanzania you just need to uh, book your ticket and leave if you do not require a visa to enter Tanzania meaning if you're visa free obviously in regard to a visa your cost is zero but if you do require a visa to enter Tanzania the cost of visas can is between somewhere between fifty dollars to a hundred dollars and you can get an e-visa but when you get an e-visa just make sure make sure it comes through and please I know we're in a digital world and everybody's keeping everything on the phone it's easy it's fast it's accessible but please print it out print your visa out print um, if you can print let's say the payment you made proof of payment print all of that out because I had seen a lady the second time around when uh, when I came back the second time around, I had seen a lady, I think she was American, who had faced some troubles because her phone went off and she couldn't show them and it wasn't showing on the system. These things happen, systems shut down and whatnot. Yes, it's not her fault, but you know, to some level you also have a responsibility. So if you're traveling, you get an e-visa, just print the visa out, you lose nothing. Print the visa out keep it on yourself if you have to show your phone well and good if you have to show physically you're already prepared I'm going to that's a loud firework I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can be able to see whether or not you need a visa to travel to Tanzania depending on the country you come from the next thing you need to do is check your flights and book it I traveled from Lusaka, Lusaka, Zambia, straight to Dar es Salaam. So I'm going to use Lusaka and Zambia as the reference. But I'm also going to give you guys some tips on how you can book the cheapest and get the best deals out of your flights. So the cheapest flight I found when I was checking Lusaka to Zanzibar was $290 but bear in mind this was three months ago and it was weeks prior to the trip uh, but the closer you get to the date the price changes the biggest tip however I can give for anybody trying to travel on a budget is to be flexible be flexible with your date check for dates there are always days that are cheaper and times that are cheaper and layovers 
okay if you want like a direct no layover obviously it's going to be a little more expensive but if you're flexible you probably have a long layover somewhere your flight is likely to be cheaper if you book in advance like i said my checking was three months ago okay weeks before the trip so you're preparing you're trying to book your flights way earlier than the actual time of your trip it's likely to be cheaper if it's not peak season peak season flights to most places especially touristic places the price is going to be higher so be flexible if you can travel when it's not peak season that's a good deal if you can travel on days that other people avoid or the days that the airlines put you know cheaper flights and whatnot you get a good deal if you can travel late or really early you get a good deal so next we are going to talk about the hotel but before we get into that remember that this video is part of uh, a large zanzibar vlog video so check out my description box below or my tanzania playlist to watch some of my other zanzibar vlogs and just make sense out of all of this for the hotels uh stone town zanzibar has two parts there's stone town town and then there's the beach areas which is a distance between the two so if you want to visit um prison island the fort and just you know for Adani, kept on fish market that area it is best you stay in stone town so in stone town uh we stayed at hotel verden it was 95 dollars per night but when you add tax and every other thing they added it came to 112 dollars per night which was a steal because normally that hotel it's 200 dollars per night this brings me to mention another tip when you're searching for hotels take your time be patient and look over and over and over again because just like flights sometimes hotels also have deals remember that tip i liked this hotel i really liked it it was nice it was in a good location it had a good vibe there was a restaurant on the premises all of that good stuff uh, those usually those almost always taxis available on site although you could you know designate a driver upon your arrival and negotiate best fares to pay but this hotel itself pretty much always had taxi drivers available that being said this particular hotel i would recommend it for travelers who are budget free or luxury travelers but if you're on a budget there are two hotels i would suggest based on research review and general information out there both of them costed 39 40 dollars and they're relatively good because also the stone town doesn't have a lot of options or the very best compared to the beach areas because most tourists and travelers when they go to zanzibar it's for the waters and the beaches you you won't even spend much time in stone town so if you're on a budget and you go really budget budget to stay in stone town you lose nothing great deal okay so the two hotels i found were stone town house which is 40 dollars yes it has pretty good reviews on both agoda and booking.com it offers hostel type of accommodation two in a room three in a room which is great if you're traveling in a group really good i think it also offers four so just check that out agoda and booking.com stone town house it might be for you the second hotel i came across and i thought would be cool is smile stone town hotel that one is 39 dollars 
great for budget and most of the reviews seemed really good so you can also check that out because you know when you're looking at hotels when you're looking at accommodation really accommodation of any sort check the reviews out but obviously reviews are personal opinion somebody else's review might not be the same as yours so don't take take every review you read with a pinch of salt but most of it i read was pretty good and we're talking budget traveling and it's stone town like i mentioned most people i don't think a lot of people go to zanzibar and spend like more than three days in stone town that's probably like the maximum so it's a good deal just check it out and just remember a lot of times with most of these hotels you tend to get what you pay for so don't expect too much is is what i'm saying just be flexible heading away from stone town is um you go to the beach areas and i uh, zanzibar has a lot of beach it's you know it's when you look at the map it's like round like that so it's got beaches all around but the most famous is Nungwe and Paje if I'm not mistaken and which is up north I was east coast uh, Pongwe beach at La Mesen beach resort hotel that place is beautiful it's it was near the rock the rock restaurant so if you're familiar with the rock restaurant yes the hotel was that side of the island uh, we paid two hundred dollars per night for that place after taxes which again was a steal because normally <laughs> the prices for that place is 350 to 500 dollars per night and we managed to get it for 200 dollars like i said when you search 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 be patient flight search 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 be flexible you will be surprised the deals you come across and the things you see uh, i had to read this one because i i wasn't gonna okay so and then i have a friend who stayed at uh, opera op Oprah Hotel in Nungwe, which is up north, and she says she paid $87 per night for that place. But then the downside for that place was it was not so close to the beach, it was like quite a trip, a walkable distance. So for the La Mesen Beach Resort, the, it was literally by the beach, like literally by the water. And it was two types. I have a full video again, check the video out if you haven't already. So uh there was the normal room and the villa you could literally literally see the most beautiful sunrise and sunset from there and then my friend says hers was a bit of a walkable distance so, um and then there's also the the option of a different villa again this was from the island if i'm not mistaken far from the beach I made a video about it. My friends, uh, Alex and Parthenia, stayed there. Beautiful, beautiful place. Also offered a beautiful sunrise view, but it wasn't bit by the beach like that however that is also an option for accommodation check it out dt villas i have a video and dt villas actually has an instagram page you can check them out as well as actually all of them have instagram pages and i know that visual can ginger you if that's what you're looking for just as i mentioned uh, for the Hotel Verdon, it's the same thing for La Mesen Beach Resort. I would really recommend it for budget-free travelers or luxury travelers or if you're traveling in a group, I think, not a big group. Because when you watch the video of the villa, the space could take like four people. So if you're traveling for female friends or male friends and you could share a space, you could definitely be able to afford that.
flexibly and not so much on a tight budget. So all of this information I am sharing is based on my experience, information I gathered and personal preference. If you find this valuable, please consider subscribing, share, click the like button, but also if you have any different recommendation and tips that I won't mention, please leave them in the comment section below. I am very sure somebody will find them helpful because I obviously may not have gathered every information possible. So if you know something different or something new and something I have missed, just leave it in the comment section below and help someone else as well as myself. I have talked so much. My mouth is drying up. I literally need a glass of water. Yes, food. Uh, I generally think eating in Zanzibar is affordable. I mean, across the island, food can cost anything between six to eighteen dollars for a plate of food in, like, you know, a standard restaurant. And I didn't even really notice a lot of restaurants. The side that I was, and the, the sides that I went to, let me mention that. And this six to eight or eighteen dollars does not include street food. If that's something you'd like to try out and explore, I'd advise you with a local, just for safety's sake. You'd never know what happens. Sellers, even if it's food sellers, they're not always honest about what they're serving. So if you're gonna try street food, especially for a dining street market, I'd advise you at least with. A local that is familiar with the place there's obviously then there's cape town fish market the pricing there is not much on the higher side but you know first cape town fish market is a famous franchise restaurant if i'm not it, it's in south africa so some of you guys may be familiar with it it's kind of like ocean basket but cape town fish market is a famous and very nice spot and then there's the rock restaurant most people are familiar with that one that one is expensive it's a tourist attraction in Zanzibar and yes it's expensive if you want to go there that's a meal that you budget I'm going to leave uh, the menu to both places in the description box below so you can just check it out for yourself otherwise generally on a normal, I mean, if you spend like $10 on breakfast, you could spend like $10 on breakfast and then $25 on lunch or dinner. Chances are because you're on vacation and you're traveling and you, you're touring the place, you probably have two meals in a day. So your budget would be like, should be like $35 on a meal per day, roughly and um, for drinks you know you can spend anything between two to nine dollars even for a glass of wine all in all i really think eating on the island is affordable no matter how much of an eater you are hey guys it's late in the night and i'm tired i think i'm going to finish this video tomorrow but before we do that let's let's talk about activities which is like the main thing people go to zanzibar for to experience the blue waters the white sand beaches and activities and this this is this is the fun part if you're a content creator if you're an adventurous traveler this is the fun part this is what you look forward to and probably do your research on as well so on activities there's a general pricing across the island every place has its pricing 
so for every what am I saying? Oh my gosh. Okay, so for activities, there's a general pricing across the island. Okay, it generally depends on you and the activity you want to participate. So you can allocate money for that. There are people who, you know, want to do everything and they're type of travelers who want to do nothing. They want to relax and spend time in the hotel. So if you're that type of traveler, yeah, maybe activities is not really a segment, but it's worth watching and listening to because there could be that one activity on a bucket list. So here are some of um, the expensive activities and their cost. Okay. And one thing, one thing I really, really, really wanted to do when I went to Zanzibar was the horse riding. I'm pretty sure you've probably seen it on Instagram and whatnot. I think it's really cool and I really wanted to do that. And the day, first of all, I didn't know that you have to book. If this is something you're also interested in, you have to pre-book. Unlike the other activities where you just go to, um, the horse riding you have to book so if that's something you want to do just keep in mind you have to book so maybe as soon as you get there do your booking because that looks like a really fun activity and, uh, expensive um activities sorry i'm reading this huh don't want to miss anything so for the some of the expensive activities if you book online you can get two diving sessions per person for $90 and then there's group lessons of kite surfing for about two hours it costs around $60 from what I heard and can mostly be done Paja Beach Paja which is like the east side and then for the common and inexpensive activities which are also really fun there's the snorkeling that is enjoyable and it's offered in more than one place so it's not like one standard place you can find your way around you can work your way around that then there's the stone town tour you um you can either get a guided tour, you know, a, a guide just helps you because Stone Town and its alleys are small, it's complicated and whatnot. But also you can do yourself walking tour if you're the type that likes to get lost while you're exploring. That's also an option. So if you get an agent, um, a tour guide to walk you around, explain everything, there's, you pay for that. But if you do it yourself, you're paying for nothing. You're doing it by yourself. If you're with friends, that, that would be quite fun and easy to get around. Then there's the Prison Island tour. I actually didn't go to Prison Island, so I don't know much. I can't... Um, I don't know much but I know for a fact it's it's fun most people do it when they go there when they go to Zanzibar and then there was a spice farm tour that was oh my gosh you guys that was so enjoyable like that was enjoyable and educational and then there was uh, the tortoise feeding the tortoise tour that also it was an experience I really did like that once you even get to Zanzibar at the term, uh, if you fly in, I don't know, I didn't fly in, I, sorry, I took the ferry. So when you arrive in Zanzibar via the ferry, the taxis there, the people already offering you uh, tours and whatnot. So you can already pick someone out and negotiate from there. So it's negotiable, okay? Something like snorkeling is negotiable. Uh, Stone Town private tour, it's negotiable spice farm tour the spice farm tour is really you just tip okay so because they show you around they educate you they teach you and then you made these little nyana nice things to you know if you follow me on just watch like i mentioned watch my zanzibar vlogs and you'd make sense out of all of this so for the spice farm tour you get little gifts so really you're just tipping and at the end of the tour Towards the end, there's, they have like a spice station 
and uh, perfume station so if you buy from them buying from them is supporting and basically that's kind of like your payment so to say otherwise nothing much really goes into that Zanzibar also offers skydiving I don't think a lot of people know this most people when they think about skydiving they want uh, skydiving Dubai but Zanzibar also offers skydiving it's one thing I would have loved to do but <laughs> you know loving to and wanting to do something and actually going for it are two different things but yes Zanzibar also offers skydiving what other activities can I mention hmm and when i was just snorkeling in uh, pongwe beach is it there were scuba divers so i'm not sure but maybe there's that is equally offered i at some some place i couldn't really gather that information so if you know anything about that please let me know in the comment section below anybody you could be helping someone out who would like to do it yeah so let's say your budget you know just to put down you know like an actual budgeting for zanzibar on average i would say you put 120 dollars a day to spend in zanzibar 120 dollars so you enjoy yourself enjoy your activities another activity that i have not mentioned that is completely free is literally just going to the beach i mean you're in a beautiful place a beautiful island what better way than to enjoy the place the view just walk along the beach enjoy the place enjoy the sunset a lot of people do go to the rock restaurant just to see it and that is for free you could take beautiful pictures at the place of the place of the beaches and the waters this, i saw beautiful sunsets from every angle and all of that is for free mother nature is for free uh there's also swimming with the dolphins yes that's that, that activity was combined with snorkeling at the first place that i did i can't remember the name of the beach of the uh, where i uh, did swimming with the dolphins but i think for zanzibar swimming with the dolphins is only that area i could be mistaken but i think it's only offered in that particular area Hey guys, so my battery died and I've literally just boosted it to make an outro video. I think at this point the video is already quite long. I'm going to end it here and continue with the part two. The more information that I have that I've not shared, like I mentioned, I wrote everything down so I haven't gotten to everything. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has been helpful and informative, please do share to somebody who might be looking out for this information and if i've left out anything comment in the just in the comment section below everything that i have mentioned that i'm going to add a link to will have a link in the description box below otherwise thank you guys so much for watching